Praise the Lord, family. God bless you for joining me this afternoon for yet another powerful week of our midday connection. I know God has fresh word from his presence for you and I, and so uh, I'm so blessed and honored to be here to serve you as God's people. So um, I want to believe you are doing well just as your family, and I trust your weekend has been a blessing. And even as we begin this new week, I want to believe that God is prepared you for what he's getting ready to do in this new week. I know every season comes with new open doors from the Lord. God is always doing new things in every new season. So I want you to be expectant. I want you to be in expectation of that which God will do in this new week. He will surely visit us. He will do something powerful amongst us. You know, whilst I was preparing for this week's teaching, which obviously, as you can see, it's a blessing blockers. Um, I, I question myself at so many levels because uh, I'm one of the proponents of the fact that whatever God does is forever. If I'm blessed by God, no one can change that. So I began questioning, well, if God blesses me and nobody can change that, then what will make me to have my blessings start. In fact, no devil can stop my blessing. No demon can stop my blessing. The only person that can stop my blessing is me. And that is why I believe we need to talk about blessing blockers because sometimes we are engaged in a wrong battle. We are fighting a wrong battle. We're fighting a wrong enemy. I see how sometimes we will pray, binding and losing and you know, casting out demons and what have you, there, there is a place for that. We, we engage in spiritual warfare. Bible makes that very clear that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers and, you know, what have you, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. We confront all these entities of darkness. But, you know, when it comes to your blessing, one thing I know about the blessing of God is that once God blesses you, no one can take it away from you. But the only one that can block that blessing is you yourself. And that is why we got to dig into the Word of God and find out how we can block our own blessings. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, spend some good time with you this week to reveal to you how our own mouth can block our own blessings. How unforgiveness can block our blessings. How the things we say can block our own blessings. The, the decisions we make has a way of blocking our own blessings. There are so many things you and I might be doing that is blocking our blessings, yet we are fighting the enemy. We are binding the enemy, believing that it is a witchcraft, it is a curse somewhere, it is something that somebody is doing to you, which is the reason why you are not encountering the blessing God is giving to us. This week, God is going to open our eyes to the reality that for the most part, we are the very cause of our blessings being blocked. I wanted to take a moment right now and, you know, share the page, invite somebody like we always do. We don't want to be selfish. We want to get as many people as we can to hear the word because God wants your blessing to be unleashed. There should be nothing in the way. So copy the link right now, share it on social media, share it on your page, Facebook, TikTok, whatever you have. Uh, WhatsApp, you know, whatever, uh, whether it be it Instagram, you know, whatever app you use, using, make sure you copy the link, you know, share it. Uh, text somebody, call somebody and tell the person, let's get on Love Legacy Chapel International page on Facebook. There is something interesting going on there right now, which will transform your life and bring your blessing to you speedily. Glory to God. Well, this afternoon, I want us to start this conversation on blessing blockers with a few foundational understanding of what the Word of God says. Bible makes very clear that when you and I give our life to the Lord, we got born again, we received Jesus into our lives. Our location in the realm of the Spirit, God changed. We were taken out of the kingdom of darkness and brought into the kingdom of light. We were taken out of the kingdom of darkness and brought into the kingdom of His dear Son. 
I know one thing, that in the kingdom of darkness, there are curses. There are all kinds of negativity and influence of the kingdom of darkness. But this kingdom we have come to, I also understand that it is full of blessing. And think about it, a curse to be empowered to fail, a blessing is to be empowered to succeed. It means now you and I are in a kingdom where we are empowered to succeed, to be successful to experience and encounter the blessings of God. My question is that if God has truly said, this is the kingdom he's brought us, and God has supplied all that pertained unto life and godliness, how come you and I are still struggling? How come we're still not receiving the blessings God has already promised us? Well, we're going to see a few things we've been doing while we're not getting these blessings because Bible makes it very clear from the Old Testament right through to the New Testament. We're going to see how some of these things we do has a way of blocking our blessing. And this is not, you know, teachings under the law alone, but these are teachings that we see even in the New Testament under the dispensation of grace. And so I wanted to get ready. I'm going to start off with a scripture in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 because the first thing I want to talk about is the place of our parents. Our parents occupy a powerful place in our lives and sometimes we might take it for granted that well you know my parent is an unbeliever so what power do they have over me? Their words are powerful. The statements of our parents are powerful. And I want to broaden this spectrum a little bit because we're not just talking about biological parents. We're even talking about spiritual parents. God says, I will give you pastors after my own heart. It means God gets to choose who your pastor must be. And your pastor occupies an office that oversees your destiny. And what they say about you will come to pass. We could ignore it. We could take it for granted. We could make believe that it doesn't mean anything. But if you look at all the men of God in the Old Testament all the way to the uh, uh, New Testament, their words were full of power. Think about... Um, People like Noah who was drunk, he came out of the Ark of the Covenant where all men rejected the Ark that was supposed to be the safety net God has provided prior to destruction. When men rejected it, animals took charge of it. And animals got saved whilst men died in the flood that destroyed the whole earth. But the amazing thing is that when the man of God came out of the ark in celebration and in joy, he got drunk. But Bible says that three of his kids... Uh, I mean, Ham obviously was the one that initially saw his nakedness and then he went to bring uh, uh, the two other siblings, uh, Japheth and Shem. Bible says the two of them didn't want to see their father's nakedness. They turned their back to their father and brought clothes and covered him. But the amazing thing is that when the man of God in his drunken state woke up, he cursed Ham. And this is where it gets so interesting because he woke up he didn't curse Ham directly. He cursed his grandchild called Canaan. And and Bible makes very clear that his curse was so straightforward. He said, you're going to serve as a servant for the rest of your life to your siblings. And then when you come into the book of Judges, uh, uh, in the book of Joshua, we see the prophecy, the curse released by Noah happening. In fact, Bible makes very clear that the tribe of Gibeon, and Gibeon was a descendant of the Canaanites, who was the grandchild of Ham. That curse that Noah in his drunken state released came to pass. Bible says they became hewers of wood and drawers of water unto their siblings. And what am I talking about? That was the most menial job any man could do in their days, to become drawers of water and hewers of wood. That was a job of slavery and a job that was menial in their days. But that was as a result of the curse that was released by a father. I, I think about a man that got born again and followed the apostles in the early church and, and he was originally a sorcerer and when he saw the dynamism with which the man of God demonstrated the power of the Holy Ghost, he offered money to the apostles to receive the same. And the Bible says the apostle cursed him and said to him, you die and perish with your money. I want you to understand that the words of the people of God that God has set up above us 
Bible says they are supposed to watch over our soul. None of us have the power to choose who our parent must be. None of us chose our parent before we were born. It is God that chose your father. It is God that chose your mother. God knows why you needed that mother. He knows why you needed that father. And so he chose them and brought them together to have you even before you were born. And that is why God says that honor your father and your mother. And I love this scripture in the book of Ephesians, which I want us to read. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. Bible says, honor your father and your mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well. This is a New Testament scripture where God has brought us to the place of blessing. He's already blessed us. The blessing has already been released, but he gives you the key to unlock the blessing. He says, your key to unlock this blessing, that it may be well with you is to honor the father God gave you. Whether he's a drunkard like Noah, it is not your place to dishonor them. It is your place to honor them. I love this. It says, as you honor them, things will go well for you. Could it be this is the reason why things are not going well with you? And you have assumed that it is a demon. It could be all you need to do is to repent and begin to honor the father God gave you. Honor the mother God gave you. You might be looking at them and think they are not worthy of your honor. It is because you don't realize that it is God that appointed them as parents unto you. It is the same as your spiritual parents. Sometimes we may not like the kind of spiritual appearance God gives us, our pastors, our leaders, but it is God that chose them over our lives so that they will become overseers of our soul. That is what the Bible says. And God says, as we honor them, things will go well for us and you will have a long life on this earth. I wanted to think about the blessing of longevity and the blessing of experiencing fruitfulness at all levels of your life. Fruitfulness in your career, your business, your academic pursuit, whatever God has called you to do. He says, as you honor your father and your mother, it shall be well with you and God will grant unto you longevity. I think about uh, uh, Paul's letter to Timothy and I want to read this quickly before we pray today because God wants you to go back and honor your parents. Some of you that are not talking to them, it is time you made peace with them because your blessing hangs in the balances because of your dishonor unto your parents. I love what Paul writes to Timothy. Timothy, I thank God for you. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, I'm reading from verse number 3 to 6. This is Paul writing to his son Timothy. He said, I thank God for for you that God I serve with a clear conscience just as my ancestors did. Paul references his ancestors, how his own forefathers worshiped God with a genuineness of their heart. He says, night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. I long to see you again for I remember, I love this. He says, I remember your tears as we parted. And I will be filled with joy when we are together again. I remember, look at this. He says, I remember your genuine faith. Do you read in scripture where Bible says faith comes by hearing? But now he wants to reveal to us in this scripture that there is a level of faith that even comes as a result of our lineage. Who is your mother and who is even your grandmother? He says, again, he says, I remember your genuine faith. For you share the faith that first filled your grandmother. Lois and your mother Eunice. He says the faith you have was first of all in your grandmother. It's a generational faith and that faith was also in your mother and so you inherited that faith under the New Testament in a season of grace. You inherited the same level of faith from your grandmother, from your mother and I know that that same faith continues strong in you. If faith can be transgenerational, I want to believe that our blessings can be transgenerational. And so we don't want to look down upon our parents who God is appointed in the office of a father and mother, spiritual father, spiritual mother. We want to honor them. Glory to God. He says, this is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. His spiritual father even lays hands on him and there is transference 
of the anointing. Oh, I love this. He says, you got to think about this. He says, this is why I remind you to fan into flame the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. When your spiritual father lays on him, his hands on you, there is a transference of the anointing. There is a transference of blessings. There is a transference of gift for those of us that have removed ourselves from the spiritual fathers God gave us. You are doing yourself a dishonor. Bible says do not frustrate the grace of God. There are attitudes we put up that even frustrate the provision of the grace of God. But today as we have received the word of God, we want to read unite. We want to reconnect with our spiritual father, with our biological parents and not just reconnect. We want to honor them. It is the place of the release and unblocking of our blessing. If there is a blessing being blocked, this is one of the reasons. Honor your father and your mother. And Bible says it may be well with you. Is your marriage not that well? Is your finances not that well? It is time to lift your hands and say, Lord, please forgive me. I repent Lord, forgive me of all the negativities I spoke about my father. All the negativities I spoke about my mother. All the negativities I spoke about my father spiritual father. Lord, forgive me. I repent today. And Lord, I make a decision to honor my pastor. I make a decision to honor my, my father, to honor my mother. For Lord, indeed, as I honor anything that has blocked my blessing, Lord, I know my blessing is unblocked. Even right now, as I repent and make that decision to honor these great men and women, you have placed in my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Listen to me, child of God. By repenting and by making a decision to honor your mother and your father and even your spiritual parents God is placed in your life, that decision right now, right here, has unblocked any blessing that was blocked as a result of your decision and unwillingness to honor these people God placed in your life. I wanted to pick up the phone today. If you haven't spoken to any of these people we are talking about today because you were offended, you were hurt, and what have you, I wanted to pick up the phone today. Call them up and tell them how much you genuinely love them and how much you long to come back home and to be in relationship. When I talk about coming back home, I'm not talking about taking your clothes and going back to your parents. I'm talking about you reinstalling and renewing your relationship to the place you know deep within your heart. A true, genuine parent-child relationship ought to be. Take the phone and do that right now. Remember the prodigal son's daddy kept waiting. He didn't go chasing. It is the child that came back and so as a child you want to go back and make peace with your parents and as you do so God will unblock every blessing that has been blocked as a result of your unwillingness and I tell you what as we go through this series everything that has been blocked as a result of ignorance God will bring us revelation in his word and begin to unblock all these blessings to come our way until same time tomorrow, don't miss it. I look forward to connecting with you at 12 o'clock tomorrow for our midday connection. I want you to know I truly love you. Grace and peace to you. Shalom. Hey everybody, Pastor Chris here from Love Legacy Chapel. Just want to make an announcement that if you can't make in-person services, that's okay. We have virtual services every Wednesday evening, Bible study, Friday evening, prayer service, and Sunday morning. If you can't make it in the house, you can check us out on Zoom. We have virtual services. Hey, listen to a couple of testimonies and just be blessed in knowing that we are here for you. Amen. We live in Colorado now because I'm in the military. Due to the fact that we live so far away from home, we're not able to attend church on a regular basis in person. But thankfully, we live in a world that is now mostly virtual and we're able to enjoy all of the virtual perks. So being home away from home.
The church world today is confronted with a situation that is no different from what is recorded throughout scriptures. From the days of Moses, he was confronted with leadership crisis and it was so serious he had to appoint leaders who would join him to govern Israel. You see, the ministry can no longer afford to have members that just shows up week after week. And so this is the goal. The goal is straightforward. Recruit, equip, and deploy. And this program is designed just to solve this problem and to equip your team and prepare them ready for this new dispensation. Apostle William Childers is leading the charge in developing cutting edge leaders. Serving the spirit of greatness reveals how horizontal and vertical relationship undergirds all great leadership. Apostle Shalders provides insight to how the infusion of life experiences, personal gifting, and our individual culture is foundational to the development of authentic leadership that will meet the demands and needs of today's people. We have entered into the world called the virtual world, and it's a world that seems to be unknown to many. Today we have virtual weddings. We're gonna have virtual church plant, which is gonna be one of the big things that is getting ready to erupt. The question is, is the church ready for this? You know, Love Legacy Academy is a ministry intended to equip leadership with greater skill sets to disciple and to lead God's people. No matter what level of leadership you're on, no matter where you're at in your calling, come to training. Come to be trained. There's nothing sweeter than being in fellowship with those who are intended to hear and to obey the voice of God. So these two courses are designed with your team in mind. We have the certified church worker and the certified coach. Now the certified church worker is to ensure that each member of your team is equipped. So to be certified means they are equipped to do the work they are called to do. And so we have three courses built into this certification program. The first one is discovering your ministry. The second one is the servant ministry. And of course, the third one is to ensure that every member of your team fits into the team. It is called teamwork. And so we want to make sure that your team is equipped with these tools and by so doing become certified to do that which they are called to do. The second program is called the Certified Coach. A coach is a shepherd. A coach is somebody that takes care of others. We want to make sure that this whole certification program is not just a piece of paper, but your team is truly equipped with the tools they need to the degree that everybody on your team practices what is being taught in these training programs. We want to make sure that it's not just an event, but it becomes a culture in your ministry where everybody is equipped and deployed to do the work of the ministry. So I hope you would consider to enroll your entire team on this great certification program that will prepare them for this great harvest of the kingdom of God.